So next we have 5.2 Pythagorean Theorem, Angle Bisector Theorem and Sivas Theorem. So we look into 5.2.1. Five point two point one. It says that the altitude drawn to the hypotenuse of a right triangle. So we have a right triangle. Separates the right triangle into two right triangles that are similar to each other and to the original right triangle. So the altitude drawn to the hypotenuse of a right triangle separates the right triangle into two right triangles that are similar to each other and to the original right triangle. Okay, so first thing for theorem 5.2.1, it's only applicable for right triangle. So let's say we have one right triangle. Let's say here we have triangle A, B, C. Okay, and we have one altitude that is drawn to the hypotenuse. So hypotenuse is the longest side. So, the altitude is from vertex A towards side BC that form 90 degree. The altitude. Sorry, the altitude. So, uh, let's say here this one is point D. So, AD is the altitude. Okay. So, altitude AD will create another two triangles that are triangles A. D, B and triangle A, C, D whereby these two triangles are similar to each other and these two triangles as well similar to the original triangle that is triangle A, B, C. So triangle A, D, B similar to A, B, C and triangle A, C, D as well similar to triangle A, B, C. Okay, and then we have the definition of geometric mean. So, what is geometric mean? So, let's say we have a non-number, a non-zero number B and A and C. So, we have three numbers B, uh, A, B, and C. So, we have A, B, and C. So, the geometric mean, uh, let's say B is the geometric mean, uh, whenever B uh, when we have a proportion, uh, proportional, so let's say um, A over B equal to B over C. So B as the geometric mean. So why B is the geometric mean? Because um, at, the, uh, at the one hand side, B would be um, uh, in the lower part and the other part B on the upper part. Okay, so B as the geometric mean of B uh, of A and C. So if um our proportion would be in this form, so we can say that B as the geometric mean of A and C. Okay, so uh, we have another representation as well that is um. C over B equal to B over A. Okay. So at one side B, at one side B at the lower part and the other side B at the upper part. Okay. And then we have theorem 5.2.2. It says that the length of the altitude to the hypotenuse of a right triangle is the geometric mean of the length for the segments of the hypotenuse. The length of the altitude to the hypotenuse of a right triangle is the geometric mean of the length for the segments of the hypotenuse. So, <clears throat> let's say we have a right triangle. Let's say we have triangle A, B, C and we have one altitude. What is altitude? Altitude is, draw, uh, altitude is a line segment drawn from the vertex to the opposite side that form 90 degree. Okay, so let's say line segment AD is the altitude. 
So theorem 5.2.2 it says that the altitude as the geometric mean. So whenever it says that uh, whenever it says geometric mean, then um, we have a proportional whereby proportional is the equality of two ratios. So we have the equality of two ratio ratio represented as in um, a over b. So it says that the altitude, the length of the altitude as the geometric mean. So AD is our altitude. So AD at one side, AD would be on the upper part and the other side, AD will be the lower part. So AD is the geometric mean to the segments of the hypotenuse. Okay, because of the existence of point D, the our hypotenuse BC uh, is segmented into another two segments that is BD and DC. So our alti altitude AD as the geometric mean to the segments of the hypotenuse that is AD is the geometric mean to BD and DC. Okay. And then we have another uh, lemma here, lemma 5.2.1. It says that the length of each leg of a right triangle is the geometric mean of the length of the hypotenuse and the length of the hypotenuse and the length of the segment of the hypotenuse adjacent to that leg. So they uh, so it says that the length of the leg of a right triangle, which part is the leg? So, uh, for a triangle, the longest part is the hypotenuse. Uh, the, the longest side is the hypotenuse and the other two sides we call as leg. So, for a triangle, it, it has uh, two legs. So, lemma 5.2.1, it says that the length of the leg of a triangle is the geometric mean. So, let's say we, have, uh, we, we take one of the leg that is AB as the geometric mean so remember that geometric mean must be in the form of proportional that is equality of two ratio okay so whose would be the geometric mean the length the length of the leg the length of the leg so let's say we choose a b so a b as uh, is uh, AB as the geometric mean so at one part at one side AB would be on the upper part and the other side AB would be on the lower part so AB is the geometric mean to the length of the hypotenuse so our hypotenuse is BC and another one is the length of the segment of the hypotenuse adjacent to that leg so earlier we choose AB here and the hypotenuse is segmented into two segments that is BD and DC. So uh, BD is uh, BD is placed adjacent to AB. So therefore here AB is the geometric mean to BC and BD. Okay. So um, what are the what is the usage of the geometric mean or what are the usage of the previous theorem and lemma that we have seen before? So we can use the lemma and theorem uh, theorem 5.2.2 and lemma 5.2.1 in proving the Pythagorean theorem. So what is Pythagorean theorem? So Pythagorean theorem it says that the square of the length of the hypotenuse C is equal to the sum of the squares of the length of A and B that are the legs of the right triangle that is C square equal to A square plus B square. So we will use uh, theorem 5.2.2 and lemma 5.2.1 in order to prove the Pythagorean theorem. So here are the proving. So uh, please take note uh, that uh, here is C over A equal to A over Y. Please update your notes. Here is y, not x. Okay, okay. Uh, and then the rest you can look uh, this proving. Okay. <clears throat> so next we have the Pythagorean triple. Pythagorean triple. So what is Pythagorean triple? Pythagorean triple is a set. 
it must come in a set of three natural numbers a b c for which c square is equal to a square plus b square so we know we know that c square equal to a square plus b square is a pythagorean is stated in pythagorean theorem so the numbers a b and c are we call as pythagorean triple and then theorem 5.2.3 we have the converse of the pythagorean theorem so um, if we have um, the pre previously we know that let's say we know that the triangle is a right angle triangle whereby uh, the longest side is C and the other two side denoted by A and B so by Pythagorean theorem we can say that C square equal to A square plus B square okay however if we only know that the information for the triangle is C square equal to A square plus B square, whereby C is the longest side. So, by using converse of Pythagorean theorem, we can conclude that the triangles are a right angle triangle. Okay? That is the difference of Pythagorean theorem and converse of Pythagorean theorem. And then we have here theorem 5.2.4. Let A, B and C represent the length of the three sides of a triangle with B be the length of the longest side. If C square, uh, if C square greater than A square plus B square, then the triangle is obtuse and the obtuse angle lies opposite the side of length C. So, number 2, if C square less than A square plus B square, then the triangle is acute. So, what we can conclude from theorem 5.2.4 and the Pythagorean theorem. So, let's say we have uh, A, B and C. <clears throat> so, here let's say. A, B and C are the length of the sides of a triangle. So, if C square greater than A square plus B square. So, denote that C as the longest side. Okay. So, if C square greater than A square plus B square, then we can conclude that the triangle is obtuse. Okay. Obtuse triangle. And let's say we have C square equal to A square plus B square. The triangle would be... A right angle triangle <coughs> if the expression is of the form c square less than a square plus b square the triangle would be an acute triangle so all the angle for the triangles are acute Okay, so this uh, this would explain the, the uh, theorem 5.2.4 as well as Pythagorean theorem. And then we have example 4. You can have a look into example 4 and uh, you can try by your own and compare your answer with the solution given here. <coughs> and then next we have theorem 5.2.5 angle bisector theorem. So it says that if a ray bisects one angle of a right triangle, then it divides the opposite side into segments whose lengths are proportional to the length of the two sides that form the bisected angle. <coughs> so it says that the, right, uh, the ray bisects one angle of a right triangle. Okay, So this would mean that the ray is the bisector of the angle in a triangle so therefore this ray will divide <coughs> so let's say cd is the uh, ray that bisect angle c so that means cd as the angle bisector so cd divides the opposite side that is of uh, the side ab into segments whose length are proportional 
to the length of the two sides that form the bisected angle. So therefore, CD will produce B over X equal to A over Y. So this is what angle bisector theorem says. <coughs> So you can have uh, you can have a look into example five for the example of the application for angle bisector theorem, and we have here example six, and then we have theorem five point two point six Sivas theorem. So it says that let D be any point in the interior of triangle ABC. So we have triangle ABC here, and D is in uh, in the interior of triangle ABC, EF. E, F, and G be uh, the points on the triangle. So point E, point F, and point G are on triangle. Let B, E, line segment B, E, <coughs> line segment B, E, line segment A, F, and line segment C, G be the line segment determined by D and vertices of triangle A, B, C. So uh, these lines are the line that connecting each vertices of triangle ABC uh, to the points on the side, on the opposite side of the vertices. And all the lines um, have one common point that is point D that are located in the triangle ABC. Then, <clears throat> then the product of the ratios of the length of the segments of each side taken in order. So it must be in order. Okay. From a given vertex of the triangle equals to 1. That is AG over GB times BF over FC times CE over EA is equal to 1. So next is example 7. So it explains how can we use Sivas theorem in our calculation. Okay, that's all for chapter 5. Thank you.